Chapter 36, Clearing History and the Cloud. There were details. I didn't know them. I told Bernadette about Mom's work cutting her hours and how she'd lectured me on going to college. Yeah, get used to that lecture. She gives it like once a week once you hit high school, she said. She just wants what's best for us, Bernadette said. So that animal, he's um, in danger? He's undiscovered. He eats plastic, she said. He could save the world, I said. She walked quietly for a few seconds, and then she said, Dude, you're going to be famous. I shrugged this off. I'm serious. You're going to end up one of those genius scientists or something. I don't know, I said. She went quiet again until she said, I worry about you sometimes. You don't see how great you are. Tommy isn't the only friend in the world. He's not even a good friend. You're worth getting to know, Obi. You're smart and funny and you're sweet, you know? I have Annie, and she's a good friend. Oh, well, that's good. I'd like to meet her, she said. Just so you know, you're a good person. I know this has all been hard for you, and I know Mom and Dad don't help much. But all, we all just want you to be happy. I'm happy, but now I'm worried more than anything, mostly about Marvin. I'm telling you, you're going to be famous. Just promise I can play myself in the movie they make about you one day, okay? We both laughed at that. On the inside, I felt better than I had in a long time. Up until that moment, I kind of thought Annie was my friend because she felt sorry for me. But now I realized that maybe I'd been selling myself short. I wanted to hug Bernadette for being so nice, but she was walking too fast, and she wasn't much of a hugger. When we got in, Mom didn't know we'd been gone. She asked, You weren't out near the creek, were you? We said no, which wasn't a lie. After dinner, Bernadette helped me upload the pictures of Marvin Gardens to the computer. She showed me how to post them to a private online folder and wrote down the address, password, and all that stuff as if I'd never used a computer before. While Mom did something in the garage, I went through each picture and enlarged the blue paint splotch on Marvin's side. I could see a raised lump there, like a bruise or sore where the paintball had hit him. How long would it take for him to get hit with a real bullet and not just paint? I fixed the pictures of Boardwalk and the baby so they were lighter and saved them to the private folder. I wanted to write something about the whole experience, actually make this my science project. Marvin wasn't the perfect solution to plastic pollution yet. There was the matter of the scat. If I wrote a paper for my science project about Marvin and didn't include that information, I'd be a very bad scientist. And I didn't want to be a bad scientist because Ms. G didn't accept bad science. I want to see all your math homework before you go to bed, Mom called from the door to the garage. Okay. She's coming, Bernadette said. Sign out of that window. Clear your history. What? Clear your history, she whispered on the computer. I had no idea how to do this. Bernadette came to the computer and did it for me. Now Mom can't see the website she visited, she said. Huh, you're sneaky, I said. I wanted to make sure I could sign back into the account with the private folder of pictures. So when Mom went out to the garage, I signed in, found the pictures, signed out again, and cleared my history. I did the two sheets of math homework I'd left on the table. Then I opened my science notebook and started writing down the story of how I found Marvin. I started with the first day, but I didn't say anything about how I thought he was eating my liver. I got all the way to today when I saw the welt on his side. I wrote questions at the bottom. Who can help me? What will they do with Marvin if I take them to him? Will he be able to stay with his family? Will his toxic waste turn out to be worse for the environment than the plastic he eats? That last question was a doozy. It was still light outside, and Dad wasn't due home for another two hours. Tommy and his friends would still be at baseball practice, so I knew what I had to do. Can I borrow your picture, your phone to take some pictures of a few other things? I asked Bernadette. She thought about it for a minute. Do not look at my texts, she said. I promise, I just need the camera. She handed me the phone. I made sure Mom was still in the garage, and I headed toward the creek. Marvin wasn't there, but I didn't want him to be there. I wanted him to be safe with his family in the den. What was there, beyond my official turf line and closer to the woods, were the pits and the dead spots in his bathroom. I tiptoed around the circles I'd marked. The oldest ones had stopped growing. They were still the size of a hula hoop. I checked a few other circles, and they weren't growing much more either. The earth wouldn't melt. This was a relief. I went to the place on Orchard Way where I'd seen Marvin's multicolored scat on the road two Sundays before. Even though it had rained then, 
right to our Sunday dinner, the road had a small divot in it, and the gutter had, that led to the drain grate had a gully carved out of it, too. I took pictures of all of it and put Bernadette's phone in my pocket. A car drove toward me on the road, and I stepped onto the sidewalk and walked toward my house. The car slowed down. I tried to, not to look at who was in it, but then it slowed down more and drove alongside me, and I finally looked over. It was Tommy's sister driving the car. Little jerk, she yelled. I walked faster. Hey, you little jerk. You better not mess with my house again. I ran. Instead of going the long way to my house, I cut between the two houses behind my house and into my backyard. A dog was barking, but I didn't care. All I could hear was Tommy's sister in my head. You little jerk. You little jerk. You little jerk. I checked my pocket for Bernadette's phone, and it was still there. I stopped on the back porch to shake off all of my feelings. I felt like crying. I felt like yelling. None of it made any sense. Bernadette's phone made a noise like she got a text, and I looked by instinct. The text was from Tommy's sister. It said, I'm making sure you get kicked off the team. Good riddance. I took a few deep breaths and then went inside to the computer. I wanted to connect Bernadette's phone to it the way she had before, but I was afraid to mess her phone up, so I went and got her. I wanted to erase Tommy's sister's text, but I couldn't do it. Instead, I handed her the phone and asked for her help, and she came downstairs and helped me take the right pictures off the phone and put them in the private folder. I printed one picture for Annie because I thought she'd like to see it, and I folded it four times and stuffed it into the front pocket of my backpack. I decided that the name Private Folder was too vague, so I renamed it Marvin Gardens. Marvin Gardens? Bernadette asked. I answered, it's ironic, right? She nodded like she understood. I wanted to talk to her about the text from Tommy's sister, but I didn't say a word. You're all set, she said. The new pictures are on the cloud. She got up and scrolled on her phone to see the text she missed. I watched her face, but it didn't change a bit. One hundred years ago, my great-grandfather would have never believed there would be texting and camera phones and computers and private folders on something called the cloud. One hundred years ago, my great-grandfather wouldn't have cared, I bet. He was too busy drinking dirt to care about much else but drinking more dirt. I went to bed before Dad even got home from work. I didn't go to sleep right away. I wrote more in my science notebook about Marvin. I reported on the scat and what it was doing to the land. I decided to turn off the light and try to sleep, but I was too nervous about talking to Ms. G the next day. I had no choice. I'd already put everything into motion. And now I had pictures and a first draft of a project paper. By the time Dad started blah, blah, blahing downstairs about Mom's boss, I'd given up going to sleep and just lay there with my head sandwiched between two pillows. One hundred years ago, if an animal was ruining the land, it would be shot. I was afraid, even though so many other things had changed in the world in a hundred years, that this wasn't one of them.